Hey, guys. Whoo, boy, we love being in this church, don't we? Don't you love it? The presence of the Lord is here to perform healing. Luke 6, 19. I don't do it. Pastor Hunter doesn't do it. Linda doesn't do it. But Jesus loves to do this. Isn't this awesome? We love uh, Hunter and Liz and the, the other leaders here and the worship team. And you guys are just so awesome. We just love, I love this bass player. He is just so excited. He carries the joy for the whole worship team. They, it's like you look, they could be preoccupied with something else. He's like, <laughs> so, bro, that is such a gift. Thank you. Thank you for carrying the ball. You're, you're really carrying the ball. So we're going to talk about healing. How many of you have experienced the Lord healing your body? Let me see your hand. Okay, isn't that awesome? When, and I'm not talking through diet. I'm not talking through things you can find, you can Google. We live in a, in, in a generation that loves knowledge, but we don't need knowledge as much as we need wisdom. And we need the knowledge of God, not the knowledge of good and evil. The knowledge of good and evil is what God prohibited Adam and Eve from getting in the garden, he said, you can eat of any tree. There were like 600 trees in the garden. And a lot of bad theologians say there was just two. There, was a, there, was, there were two that he was talking about. But in a typical garden or orchard like that, there are hundreds of them. And so he goes, if you go to Israel, you'll see, you'll see in one orchard, you'll see a group of trees. There's hundreds of them. But you might go, There's that, that's really that nice one. But God just said, don't eat of this, eat of this. And so we need God, the knowledge of God, not the knowledge of good. Because we live in a generation that's like, I don't know what to do. You know, and I love devices. I've got seven or eight. I don't know. I've lost count of all the devices. We live in a device-filled society. But devices don't heal you yet. I'm sure they're going to figure out a way. And then it's going to get a little scary when you're plugged into the matrix. By the way, see that movie, it may be more real than you think. <laughs> I think, uh, <laughs> but I was just thinking before this meeting, he said, I want to do healing. And this isn't the only thing we do, but I thought, I looked at all my notes. I was looking through my computer notes, and I just had this huge file on healing that I taught multiple times all over the world. I was like, taught this in Australia, taught this in Kuwait, and taught this here. And I was in Africa and talked about that. I was like, this is so cool that I love, and I'm proud that I love it. Because God loves to heal right. people. He loves to touch his people. Amen. Say it with me. God loves, God loves. to heal any Amen. who are sick. And, and here's another thing. I found in Scripture yesterday, I was looking, and I found three times in Scripture. And by the way, if you're st when you study your Bible, if you see one instance in Scripture, note it. It's very important, right? But if you see the same thing twice, that's the, the number two is witness. That means it's agreed, it's done, it's like a pivot point. It's like a rung of a ladder, but when you see it three times, it's the latter. <laughs> Are you, you got that? That's a principle. When you see multiple things in Scripture, you go, this is God's desire. Three times I saw in Scripture, and it says, and it was near the end of the day, and Jesus stayed even though it was getting dark, and they all were healed. Then I see another one, and he healed them all. Whoo. God wants to heal them. And then another time, I saw three at least specific times where it just enunciates, he healed all of them. Again, I know there's other instances where other things like that don't happen. But that's God's desire. And you got to understand this. God's will is not always done on earth. That's why we're here to bring it about. Do you, do you get that? So don't struggle with, well, why isn't this happening? Why? Do well, the, one of the reasons this church, one of the reasons these guys stepped on in faith from, like, was it El Paso or La Cruces? La Cruces. 
Twin Cities right there in uh, the border. Uh, they stepped out in faith to come here is to bring a move of God here. Amen. We, in 1988, Lynn and I left Orlando because we saw a revival happening in Atlanta. We're about to see a, an awesome awakening across Amen. our entire country. Amen. It's going to be awesome. Amen. It's going to be out of control. It's going, to be beyond a, it's going to be beyond a church or a man. Yes. Yes. Woo! And it can't be contained in meetings. This is why people are getting trained, because we're going to need to do it on the streets. Yes. Honey, do you want to share that dream you had, the vision you had about the helicopters and, and all of that? Okay. Okay. Woo! <laughs> well, I can tell what I saw. <clears throat> Uh, and it was 94, like 20, 20 years ago. 20 years ago. And this is why I get tripped out with what you, you're saying. No, I do. Uh, 20 years ago. Do you remember? And y'all are young, but you might have seen it on the news. There was this lady in Conyers, and every year uh, she'd see the Virgin Mary. Do you not? No. Anybody remember that? The young people are just kind of like, well. Like she sees it anymore. No, I think she quit coming. But um, anyway, every year, people would roll over to this woman's house, bring their lawn chairs, wait for days. Thousands. Thousands of people in one, yeah, right? In, in one person's yard. So it was around this time of year when that was on the news. But I saw regular people in the church and lines and cars and people with lawn chairs sitting at your front door waiting for you to go to work in the morning and maybe you'd pray for him because the Lord he was on everybody and one of the things I saw was um like helicopters you know the uh traffic helicopters well, there were the ones that chased the guys the scene for their running, you know, chasing them in the car. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this was in the day that I saw, and it was just lines of cars. I knew different people in our church and the subdivisions they lived in, and I would see lot traffic just blocked up for miles, and the traffic people were telling them don't, uh, don't go, take another route because there's there those people are praying. For people, and this is in the Atlanta area, uh, and it was anybody who believed. It was everybody, but it was nobody special. Nobody knew their names. When she when she told me that vision, I said, "We're going to see that because God gives us glimpses of what's to come." The house we live inside right now, I had three dreams about it in about a six-month period, 10 years before we bought it. And then all of a sudden, when it happened, it seemed so normal. But when I saw it, I go, this is the weirdest house I've ever seen. God wants to do exceeding abundantly beyond all you can even imagine. Not just in revival, but in us. He wants to heal you. And, and uh, I used to get tripped up like, oh, God, I'm so messed up. How can you use me till I'm all perfect? I got news for you. You will be perfect when you're dead. <laughs> and you're in your resurrected body. It's perfect. There's no cancer in heaven. There's no depression in heaven. There's no um, ups and downs in heaven. There's no hot flashes in heaven. There's, there's no PMS in heaven, ladies. <laughs> there's no cranky old guys in heaven. No, but I mean, there's none of that because we don't need that. But on the earth, we fight all this stuff, right? Because we live in a fallen world, right? Right? But we bring heaven to earth. Whew, and that's what healing is. And if I, I see, you got to get this. Jesus, Jesus just isn't the healer. He is healing. Right. Write that down. Get this. He is healing. It's like healing came to me. Guess who just came to you? Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Jesus came to you. Woo. 
I'll say it again. The power of the Lord is present to perform healing right here, right now. Whew. My goodness. Okay. I've seen all kinds of things, but here's a blanket scripture. We've heard Acts 2.21, and it shall come to pass. And we're in those days, by the way. Remember they're talking about the blood moons and the Shemitah and all that. That was the seventh year, the year of deliverance, the year of Sabbath. Uh, and their guy wrote this book and all this, whatever. But, but the point is, we did see blood moons. There, there's bizarre stuff happening in the sky. For the first time in, I don't, they don't remember how long it was in the news this morning or yesterday. The sun is totally peaceful. Usually there's storms on the sun. But now you take a picture of the sun, it's like, wow, it's so peaceful. It's, it's, never, it's never like that because it's, you know, it's like looking at the earth without any clouds on it. You know, it's just a weird thing. You're like, what's going to happen? I don't know, but the Prince of Peace had to do it because peace comes from him. Oh, by the way, Jesus doesn't bring peace. He is peace. When peace comes, just who just came. Are you, are, are you getting some of this? It's, a, it's not a thing. It's a person. God wants to do something. And it shall come past that whoever, who's the whoever? Say any, anybody who calls on the name of the Lord, that's why the name of Jesus is so important, shall be saved. You know what that word saved means? Literally, it's the word sozo. And the word sozo, first definition is healing. Shall be healed. Then it says recovery. Then that means restora then restoration. Then, re uh, then um, redemption. Then deliverance then rescue, ransom, and there's a whole bunch of them, but the big one is healing and freedom, being freed. Jesus is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord, there's what? Freedom. Liberty, freedom, because the Lord's there, because the Lord is freedom. Woo! When you have an encounter with God, you don't just have an encounter. God showed up. Say God showed up. I love it when God shows up. I love it. I, I, was, I was preaching. I kept going, what is the secret? I was listening to this meeting, and this lady prophet, this is about 20 years ago, named Sher uh, Kathy Leshner. She still preaches in Miami and all over the place. And this lady said, well, you've got revival in your back pocket. You bring revival with you. And I thought, well, wait a minute. Elijah did that. And then she talked a little bit. And, I, and we got to realize that when Jesus comes, the whole package comes. We don't have to have a, a, you know, the worship team and all of these. We look at all of these things that we bring with us, that we have to have music playing in the right key and all that stuff. Uh, it, it's anybody that calls on the name of the Lord shall be healed. And that's why Jesus came. He came to rescue the earth. It says, 1 John 3, he who sins is of the devil, for the devil is sin from the beginning. But for this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest. Why? why? That he might destroy the works of the devil. It's like, why did he come? To destroy the works of the devil. What's your job description? Uh, well, uh, I came here on assignment. Why? Well, I'm here to destroy the works of the devil. What are the works of the devil? Cancer is a work of the devil. Um... You know, any name a disease, that's a work of the devil. God didn't bring the disease. And you, we get so bogged down in, well, my diet, if I, if I would just eat more alkaline, I'd be better. And, and I appreciate all you people, all you vegans, vegans or whatever you are, you know, that say, you know, um, if you just do this. But God, even if you're eating poison, Jesus says, oh, by the way, you'll eat poison. It won't harm you. That's the kind of faith I want. Amen. Whoo! Um, if you see Jesus, you see the Father. Like, is it God's will? Why would I've been a bad girl? I've been a bad guy. I mean, I've done some bad things. But God created you in His image to do good things, to make changes, to change history. And for some reason, God looks at you differently than He looks at His other creations. He also created angels. You look in the book, the book of Ezekiel, there's a four-faced being there. I don't even know what it is, but it's there and God created it. Why did God create this being? I don't know. And it's weird. Say it's weird. But you're weird. But God created you for his glory. So he doesn't 
He doesn't want to afflict you so you can give him glory in some weird way. There's all these weird teachings about that. They'll, they'll pull Job out, you know, who's really a master of faith. He never gave up no matter what he was going through, and he got it all back times two. Okay. <laughs> if you see Jesus, you see the Father. Because it says in Hebrews 1, 3, write that down. He's the radiance of his glory, the exact, say exact representation of the Father's nature. And he upholds all things by the word of his power. People used to wait for salvation. You know, it took 1,500 years till Martin Luther uh, uh, nailed that thesis to the Wittenberg door in the Re Protestant Reformation that, wait a minute, we don't have to go to a priest to be saved. We can be saved right here by faith. We're justified by faith. It's by faith. That we're saved yeah, by grace through faith, right? Right. And we get that. But that Martin Luther, that's what he got. 1,500 years it took the church to figure that out. In 1900, people started getting baptized then in the Holy Spirit, started speaking in tongues at the Azusa revival. And people, once that happened, people would wait and go, well, you know what's happening in Azusa? I'm waiting on the Lord. What are you waiting for? Well, I'm waiting for the Lord to touch me and, and, and bless me with that gift. And it's like, here, have it. Boom. And then people realize, wait a minute, God's already given it. What are you waiting for? And that's my word to you. What are you waiting for? Who told you you can't have it? Who told you you can't operate in all the power gifts? I remember sitting in a meeting and a guy goes, who said that? Well, you know, God gives gifts. I mean, like it's a horoscope or it's like it's a personality, you know, Briggs Meyer course. Well, I'm an ETMJ or whatever. You know, those are great things, but that is the way God operates. You can have all of his gifts, all of his fruit, if you abide in him and ask for it. You have to ask for the gifts, and that's good. But you got to receive them, too. A lot of people get gifts, and they don't receive them. The devil sends gifts, too. Hey, just want you to know, the doctor said you've got this. Would you sign for it right here? No, thanks. You just, well, I'm going to have to leave it here on the porch. Nope. Uh, you just, it's not going to stay on my porch. <laughs> Take it. And this is what a lot of people do. They just sign. They don't just receive it. They sign for it. Bring it in. How many of you know there's a lot, when you get a gift, there's a lot to it. You got to. Take it, you gotta sign for it, you gotta bring it in, you gotta open it, you've gotta say it's mine, it's mine. A lot of people love, oh, I gotta be careful. But a lot of people love the drama yeah. of that. I don't want the drama of that. We've had all kind of diagnoses spoken over. We have five kids and now 13 grandkids. That's a lot. That's pretty cool, isn't it? And they're just there's just gonna be more. I mean, and once the grandkids start having kids, then we, uh, then we're great grandkids, and then when they, and pretty soon there'll be like a thousand of us. But that's kind of how Abraham did it. No, <laughs> but but they've been diagnosed, different ones. You got to watch diagnosis. That's this is the knowledge of good, because Luke was a physician. If you look at all the synoptics. Mark, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four, you get the four Gospels, the three, uh, the ones that are a synopsis, not John, are Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and Luke's the most accurate because he's a physician. He writes very specific. He won't just tell the story. He'll give you the reasons for it, who, where they came from, what their name was, their address, and they brought some, you know, the lady had a purse that was green, you know, details. So ladies, you'll love Luke because l women love details. What happened? Tell me all about it. Read Luke. Oh, by the way, Luke 6, 19. And the power of the Lord was present to heal. So, you can receive that, but we, we've had diagnosis spoken over our children, and we go, no thanks. We, go, we, we, we nod, and the doctor goes, well, you know, you're going to have to move them out to so-and-so because it's, in, it's incurable, and they'll always have it, and it's... Blah. You know, and they're telling you they're good people. Medical people are good people. Luke was one. There's a lot of good. Uh, I know a lot of different doctors that love Jesus, okay? They're, they're di but they're diagnosticians. They diagnose and cut out stuff <laughs> and prescribe stuff that will kill you. 
well, it might help you, but if you take it forever, it can kill you. It's like, here, have this poison to take care of that problem. So, and again, I'm not anti-doctor. I hope you're not hearing that. I'm not anti-doctor, but I'm not going to receive a diagnosis that God didn't say. I, I believe that truth. Linda and I were talking about this. There's truth, then there's truer truths. Got it? Got it? You believe, for example, how many of you get on an airplane and fly? How many of you have done that? Well, you just violated a truth. The truth is what goes up must come down. It's called gravity, right? Is that a truth? Is it true? But there's a higher truth. It's called lift. That if you get an object moving at enough speed with enough inertia and then lift, wings, that can pull it up, it's called we fly all over the world with it. Fly 14 hours to Australia. Whoo. Why wait? They used to tarry for the Holy Ghost. We don't have to wait for healing and deliverance forever. We don't have to tarry. Well, I've been waiting for healing. I'm waiting until Benny Hinn comes. Sorry, he probably isn't. I think he's retiring or something. You know, this is not the day of the one-man show. This is the day of the Holy Ghost every, everywhere. If you're a human, if you're a Christian, you can hold Jesus. When you invite Jesus in, oh, by the way, you invited all of him. And oh, by the way, he is healing. So if you invite healing in and, and peace in and love in and joy in and knowledge in and the words of wisdom in, you got the whole package. Isn't that good? He's the 800-pound gorilla in your house. When you invite him in, it's like you can't figure out where he goes. It's like, you know, and he wants to get in. It's weird how you, when you invite Jesus into your life, he goes, I think I want to go into this area of your life. We're like, no, 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 no. He goes, no, 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 let's get into the, I, I want to go in there. By the way, it's like t- trying to tell an 800-pound gorilla you can't, you can't go in there. He's, he's, say it with me. He's going to go. But if you ever wonder, Psalm 103 says, as far as the high heavens are above the earth, how great is his loving kindness toward those who fear him. Just as a father has compassion on his kids. I love my kids. I, don't, I can't think of any time where I'd go, hmm, you know, they need to learn a lesson. I think they need the plague. I'm pretty sure Zika would be a good cure. That will teach them. I don't think, you know, and my kids need a wallopin sometime. They even need it when they're adults. But it's not my problem. It's God's problem, right? Okay, to, to, God disciplines those he loves. But he doesn't like to use sickness to do it, and he rarely does it. I, I don't see it. He, there's other ways God can deal with you than give you, you know, the something bad. A lot of stuff we get, we go, God, why is this happening? It's like, well, (laughs) maybe you shouldn't have been there at the wrong time to get it. You know, we do a lot of stupid, let's face it, we do a lot of stupid stuff, and we ask for it. We're like, gosh, I can't believe I did this. It's so stupid. And we, yet God's merciful. Isn't it it amazing? But that's what it says. He's merciful. So he doesn't just like to hear. He's not worried about why it happened. He just wants to fix it. You got that? We don't go, I I got a mess. He goes, really? I didn't notice you're covered with mess. (laughs) Look, when a little baby, we've had our kids. I remember you'd hear the kids that get mysteriously quiet sometimes. You go in the room, and it's like they're covered with their own stuff, you know? Or whatever, and they're playing with the wrong things. You know, it's like, and they're, now I'm not talking about older kids. <laughs> I'm talking about like a one year old or whatever. It's like when they get mysteriously quiet, you know, they're in the house doing something, you're hearing them, da, 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 and all of a sudden, quiet is like, open the door, check, or go around the corner. You never know what they're into, literally. But we know, we know when they're a mess. So as a loving parent, we just clean it up. We don't go, how did this happen? Let's just analyze. They don't even know how it happened. They're stupid. (laughs) You know, the other thing about kids is they're kind of stupid. I'm sorry. Just They're a lot smarter when they're 18. Well, actually, let's just think about that. Okay. 
the, here's the main thing. The Lord, Isaiah 30, the Lord longs to be gracious. Amen? <laughs> the, it's the goodness of the Lord that brings men to repentance. And this is why the Lord loves to heal. Ten things Jesus never said about he, healing. You ready for this? Sometimes we can learn a lot by what God doesn't say. Number one, I'm sorry it's not my Father's will to heal you today. Because in John 14, 9, he said, he who has seen me has seen the Father. If you don't believe, believe me that I'm in the Father and the Father in me. Or else at least believe me for the sake of the works themselves. John 14, 11. Because he did nothing by himself. Whatever the Father does, he says, I do. Another thing, a second thing Jesus never said, I'm sorry, but my father is building character in you. So your boils and leprosy have to stay a while. Did he ever say that? He never said that. If sickness makes believers better, then let's just have a line for cancer. Or a line for, how many of you want, you know, some bad, did, nobody wants that. God's glory is in his goodness Say goodness. Say it's the goodness of the Lord. Remember, remember in uh, Exodus 33, and he says, put yourself in the cleft of the rock, Moses, as my goodness passes by you. God's glory is in his goodness, not badness. The devil has convinced believers that God's bad. He's mysteriously bad. I want you to know God's mysteriously good. God's glory is in his goodness and kindness. God is the, he's our father, not the Godfather. No bad impl implication toward Italian folks. But he's not the Godfather. He's not waiting to do a hit on you. Like, you know, uh, Johnny's going to have to come over and break some legs. But it's the thief that comes to steal. It's the thief Get your, get your, get clear why this, who's doing this. Number three, well, God, you know, they're dead now, so God heals you after you die. Duh. <laughs> Duh. How dumb. I've actually had people, well, he's in a better place. Is he? If they're not saved, they're not in a better place. I've heard that when it makes me angry. There's no cancer in heaven. There's no wheelchair ramp. To glory? Peter's not standing at the pearly gates with a, hold on, uh, how's, that, uh, how's the wheelchair ramp doing? Oh. Woo. So, yeah, people are in a glorified body after they die, but we, that's why he said, pray this prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done where? On earth. So healing is the kingdom on earth. Number four, I'd love to heal you, but the Father said not yet. That's a lie. The, time, the myth of timing, I call it. God always operates outside of time anyway. He's not like, tomorrow. You know, it's like the, the crab shack, Joe's crab shack up down the street there, up by the mall. Joe's crab shack, all the crab you can eat tomorrow. And you go tomorrow, and it's still tomorrow. Tomorrow, that's what a religious spirit does. Talks about what God used to do, what God's going to do, but we don't need that tomorrow. We need it today. God is a now God. Now faith is. I'd love to heal you, but the Father said not yet. That's a lie. Now is the day of sozo. Now is the day of salvation. He's already taken our griefs. We don't need to wait. He's never going to say not yet. I don't see any time in Scripture hold on a minute, we've got, there's only one instance, and this Syrophoenician woman came, and she goes, uh, my daughter, she didn't even bring her daughter, she goes, my daughter's possessed with the demon, and he was thinking, but I'm here to minister to the Jewish people first, he wasn't saying, I'm not going to do that, that word there is even, the, it says even the puppies, not the dogs, but the puppies feed from the table, if you have dogs in your house, how many of you have dogs in your house, they eat what you eat. Hello? And when you're done, you're like, hey, come here, Roger, or whatever his name is. And it's like, I can't eat the steak. I bet Roger's excited about it, or whatever you've got. It's called a puppy. That word there, that Greek word is for puppy, not like she's some kind of, 
And they were saying first thing. Jesus was saying, shouldn't first things be first thing? And then the lady goes, hey, once you're eating, stuff falls down. I'll, they get that. And he's like, you know what? That's dumb to wait. And he looked at her and he goes, it's already done. He saw, saw faith. Faith is a big deal. But I never tell people when we train them that we wait till their faith is perfected before we pray for them. We, f- we heal them on our faith. We get, we, we, Jesus says, you heal them. He doesn't say, go pray for the sick. He says, heal them. Are you, is anybody awake yet? Looks like you just, number five, you don't have enough faith to get it. It's another thing there. Jesus typically, though, was amazed at their faith. The centurion, the centurion didn't even go. Two versions said he went, said the centurion came. But Luke's version says the centurion sent his number one guy. He goes, you know what, I'm here. And uh, are we, we already know, just say the word. Because I, just as I'm here, he understood delegated authority. Anyway, very cool. Number six, too bad your friends and family don't have enough faith. Yet if you look at the Bible, there is a group of people with Paul and with Jesus, but with Jesus, I think it's Mark 2, they lowered a guy, a paralytic, down from a roof. Now, how many of you know that's faith? You know, here's an interesting thing. People that bring people to healing meetings because they want them to get healed usually get healed themselves. I've seen that happen almost so many times. So holiness doesn't heal us. Piety doesn't heal us. Jesus, the healer, heals us. And he's already done what he needed to do. God rewards those who diligently seek him. Now, we can't have this posture. God knows my address. I've had guys say that. Well, God knows my address. It's like, oh, I didn't know the whole world orbited around you. (laughs) What about ask, knock, seek? If you want anything from God, he tells you how to get it. Ask for it. Seek it. Knock. He even says, if you ask, I'll give it to you. If you seek, you'll find. If you knock, I'll open. It's almost like guaranteed, but he puts a condition. See, a lot of Christians think, well, if God loves me, there should be no conditions. I believe in unconditional love. Well, he doesn't conditionally love you, but to get rewarded by him, You have to do some. God is a rewarder. Say, God is a rewarder of those who seek him. Not those who passively sit around waiting for God to find their address, which he already knows. Passivity isn't what we're talking about. Amen? My father gave you this, so I'll look more glorious. The seventh thing Jesus never said. We know that's ridiculous. God gets no glory out of sickness. The guy born blind got no no glory out of that. They were even saying, who, who, whose sins are this? Are this his parents' sins or his sins? And God goes, neither. He was born blind because the world is screwed up. We live in a fallen world, and there are devils everywhere. You know, a lot of people say, well, you're looking for, like, demons, like, every, under every bush. It's like, there's about ten. It's pretty screwed up down here, if you haven't figured out. Have you figured it out yet? That's why the Bible says angels look at us that have faith. I think it's in 2 Peter. It says, and they're amazed at how we believe God in the midst of all we're dealing with. Angels go, we don't have to deal with this. Look at this. What's wrong? These people are amazing. Does God start a fire so he can rescue you from it? I think I'll just give you disease so I get glory out of it. Is he that insecure? That's what passive-aggressive crazy people do. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a label. (laughs) Well, number eight, remember my kingdom is now, but also not yet. So it's all about the not yet today. I I, I don't buy that. Woo. Number nine, we must find out all of the spiritual roots. Then we can get them healed. There are spiritual there are roots to all kind of stuff. There's a root of bitterness. You can do a lot of discovery. I've learned so much uh, getting words of knowledge and praying for people and uncovering the the kingdom is unlocked. Yes, it's unlocked. The keys of the kingdom have to you have to put them in and open them and unlock them. But uh, 
God doesn't care. God is no respecter of persons. And no matter how complicated, people that go, Mark, you just don't understand. It's complicated. It's like, good. Let Jesus have it because he's real good at complicated things. He's like, Wee! you know, the ball of twine that's all. He's like, new ball of twine. And um, this punishment is, this sickness is punishment and you're reaping. Don't ever go there. Because Jesus said, oh, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Jesus said, oh, you're freed. When you receive me, you get all that I have. Now, so he desires to heal any. He desires to heal all. He's no respecter of persons. And he never kicks his kids when they're in a the ditch. This is what I love about the Lord. The Lord is healing. He doesn't just bring it. He is it. He is what we need. If you need finance, he is your provision. He is that, that manna that appeared. He was that manna. He is what we need. He is our peace. Isn't this awesome? Yes. God wants to heal people today. Because the power of the Lord is present to heal. So we're going to do some of that. I was just remembering uh, some of these things. And I wanted to tell you, I'm going to tell you parts of stories. Then, I'll, then we'll go on. Is that okay? Everybody awake? I was just remember, I was telling Linda, I was remembering some story. I've seen, this is stuff I've seen. Remember one man came to me, a Hispanic man in Orlando. And he stood there and he goes, I have lung cancer. I go, not anymore, you don't. That's what I said. Now, where did that come from? I have no idea. This is a long, it's like 30 something years ago. All I did was go like this. And fire, I felt my hand go on fire. Well, I feel the fire of God right now. How many of you, wait a minute, how many of you are feeling heat touch your body right now? Stand up. If you feel heat in your body right now, I feel the fire of God is released right now. Just stand up if you feel heat. Go ahead. Joy, you feel some kind of heat. It's okay. Anyway, okay. No, stay standing for a second. You, this guy does, feels it too. Uh, but I put my hand there and I said, be healed in Jesus' name. And it was the first time I'd ever not prayed. I had, before that, I kind of prayed for people. Jesus, would you heal them? The Lord doesn't say, ask the Father to heal them. He says, you heal them. And I got it, and I go, be healed. And he fell out. And then I get a report. He, was, his, he uh, sent us the copy of the old, old right, you, can go, you, can sit, you can sit now. But just remember, your, let the fire stay on you. And anyway, the fire of God hit him. I went down. I said, what's happening? And he said, I feel this fire. I feel this heat. And uh, he, he showed me the thing later. But he had an x-ray. It was all in his lungs. Then he showed me the next x-ray. Nothing. We prayed for a lady, breast cancer. The x-ray, mammogram, all cloudy. You got to come back in. That horrible report. The bad report. Again, uh, God doesn't say Guys, people don't get bad reports. It's just that we've got a higher truth. Yeah, that's true, but there may be a higher truth. And it's funny how all of them, when they're gone, they always say things like, well, it must have been a glitch or a technical problem, or maybe she put her finger there, or, you know, or maybe that child that made the mess went all, you know, you know, I, I don't know what it was, but we saw that. Uh, I saw a guy named Peter in Australia just uh, the last time we were in Australia, about six months ago. Uh, Came to the meeting. I, how many years did he have that pain in his body? Yeah, I think 20 years. How many of you would like to have pain in your body for 20 years? He, he got in an accident, and I wasn't even talking about healing. I don't even know what we were doing. But he came up, and I said, I said, do you need healing? I just had this sense. And uh, he fell back, and he was in a lot of pain. So if he fell back, that was bad, right? And uh, he hit the floor. I said, leave him alone. Don't touch him. He came up an hour later, all the pain gone, completely gone. God likes to remove pain. And you go, well, it's complicated. I get a disc and I get a, a A is touching a B. God, that's no problem for God. Are, are you getting this? One guy was in Walla Walla with a team. We were preaching in a funeral home. So a lot of you are like, well, what was the atmosphere like when the Lord showed up? 
The atmosphere was a funeral home. <laughs> Dead. But the anointing was there in this church. And this guy comes in. This was horrible. Has anybody ever looked at you with a complete white eye before? A dead eye? Have you ever seen those? They're looking at you, but they're, they're not looking at you. There's no pupil. There's nothing. It's white. And there, one eye is working, and he had glasses like these, reading glasses. And it's a great story. And he comes in, and he goes, we're going to pray. And this was a team. So I had like five kids and myself, or four kids and myself praying for this guy. And we pray, and we say, now, what happened? He goes, well, 20 years ago, 20, a nail gun, and I lost my eye. Jesus. And did it happen instantly? No, we started praying. And we started, and we're praying. We said, be healed. We command the eye to open. We command a new eye. Five minutes later, I go back, and I go, what's happening? And we look, and we go, I think there's something there. And we saw, and it was, his, it was the right eye, and his left eye worked, but he needed glasses, reading glasses for his left eye. That's important. So we're praying for his eyes to be healed, and we see this little thing like a speck in the middle. I go, keep praying. I come back. It's not that. It's a dime size, or not a dime. It's like a pencil eraser size. Then it goes to the size of a dime or and or a penny like it's supposed to, right? And and complete. Then we say, okay, now put your hand over your good eye and see if you can read. And we pull something and he goes, I, I can't see. And he took off his glasses and he could read perfectly the worship chart with a new eye. 30 minutes of praying. It didn't happen instantly, but we just kept praying. And, and we prayed and we watched it happen. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Wait a minute, here's the other thing. We go, put your hand on your good eye, the new eye. And he had his, and he looked, and he could see perfectly. He didn't need his glasses. So God healed the, the gave him a new eye. Then he also healed the other eye better. And I have to wear these. I don't understand. I know a guy that does healing and has Coke bottle glasses to this day. And everybody grabs them and throws them down. And he goes, Make sure you throw them down. Let's get it done before we throw them away. <laughs> Every church he goes into, people will throw them down and crush them. And then he walks out. I guess I got to get some more glasses. I can't see nothing. <laughs> so if you're waiting till God makes you perfect to use you, yes. you'll never be used. Yes. In fact, some of the times I felt the most sick or tired or, uh, you know, fighting something, I was the most used. So God just wants you to be available. Are you getting this? Yeah. I'm glad I came here this morning. Yeah. Whoo, because God really wants to heal every kind of thing. So I'm just going to, we're going to go to the Lord and ask the Lord for his words of knowledge. We're going to start with that. And uh, the st I'm going to start with those. I want those three ladies that felt the heat to come back up here and stand here. We're going to start with you. Come on, come on. The three, there was three ladies. And, and did you have things you needed from the Lord this morning? Here, just face me. Hi, sweetie. Hi, pastor. This is our pastor. Okay. Did, did you have something that you needed? You, wanna, you don't have to talk about it, but did you need something healed physically? Did you feel the fire? Okay. So that's the healing. And, oh, boy, it's on your hands, too. So uh, we're going to put your hands out toward these. Did you have something you needed uh, healing for physically? No. Yes. Okay. How about you? Yes, my wrist. Okay. 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 So here's what we're going to put your hands out because I don't believe in this. I, I'm not, I can't do that one man show where it's like, what's happening? And, you know, and let's get the music. I just, I'm no good at that. I'm more of a team guy. Is that okay? Is that okay? So put your hands out toward them. And we're going to believe that God's given Liz a burden to heal the sick. That's why she feels that fire. And this lady here has a burden to heal the sick too, but God's going to heal her acid reflux right now. How many of else of you have acid reflux? Stand up. Everybody in the building that has acid reflux issues. Okay, and you had a sprained what? What was it? It's my wrist. What's that called? Carpal tunnel or something like that? Too much computer. Too much computer? How many of you have carpal tunnel or too much computer? <laughs> 
or you're just old and things creak. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just, okay. Uh, okay, stand up. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to believe God to touch all of these people. And what I want is somebody next to them to put their hands on them from behind. What, and your situation. Come here, sweetie. Come here. Yes. And Renee, what's your, what's your deal? Same thing? Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. Okay. 